What's going on guys, it's Nice here and today I'm back with another BF52 unboxing and review. So before I rip into this box, a little bit of an update on the situation of last month's box. They accidentally sent me out a light beers box instead of a mixed beers box, which I didn't even realise until I started drinking them. Um, but I emailed them, I spoke to a dude who was very nice and he basically just gave me a discount. Um, he said I was supposed to get, I think he said five dark beers in the last box. So he just took the price of five beers off of this box, which took it down to, I think, £22 I paid, when it should have been 37 because I upgraded to the 12 pack, so I get 12 beers, which costs a little bit extra. So yeah, that was really quickly and really easily resolved. I'm very happy with how it turned out. The staff were very nice, and I got a big discount, so um, very happy. So this month's box, um, I don't know if it does look different from last month's box, but in my brain it does, it's longer, and it's got this dude on it this time, drinking what looks like a Guinness or some kind of stout slash porter. And on this side, we've got this sort of rocker, dirtbag looking dude who is drinking from a can, and also a bottle at the same time. I wonder if they put different people on the box every week. Uh, I guess we'll find out next month. Every, every week, every month is what I want, not, not week. As we take out the knife and get into this week's box, I keep saying week when I mean month. This is a monthly box, not a weekly box. I would not be able to afford 37 pound a week. That'd be ridiculous. But I have no doubt that I'd be able to drink 12 beers a week very easily. So I'll give you the top down like I always do. There it is, looking like that from the top there. I'm gonna pull the snacks out first just cause they're on top this week. Month, month, this fucking month, not week. So these are Yushoi oven baked pea snaps, sea salt and balsamic vinegar. I feel like I've tried these pea snap sort of crisps before. Uh, not these ones in particular, but I have tried the pea snap crisps and I don't, remember thinking much to them. I don't remember them being great. I don't remember them being particularly nasty like the fava beans we had last week. They tasted not good. The barbecue flavor was nice, but the bean themselves tasted awful. So I will not be getting fava beans going forward. At least I learned that. And the second thing we've got here is howder. I think that says Bombay sweet chili ancient grain chips. I feel like I'm gonna like these. I like sweet chili things and the packaging on these looks very cool with the little elephant there. But now into the beers. Will we have dark beers this month? I think we will. The first one we've got is North Brewing Co. Earthly Delights Pale Ale. Green is my favorite color, if you didn't know. And it's particularly this sort of shade of green that I like, so this can looks very cool. Um, I'm not quite sure what the splodges are supposed to be, but I like the color of this. There's no story on this can. So um, I think this will just be your average pale ale. I probably will like this one. Number two is this one with the little, is it gonna focus on the gnome and not on my tattoo, please? There we go. This one is Lutin Dry Hopped Saison. This beer is vegan. Um, it doesn't say anything else apart from that, but this can looks pretty cool. It's giving me a mushroom trip, trip, fucking hell. You would think that I was on a mushroom trip the way I can't talk. Mushroom trip kind of vibes. Very cool. Um, I'm not quite sure what a Saison is, or if I'm even saying that right. Dry hopped Saison. We'll see but um, I'm gonna assume that this is a light beer. Just remember that I didn't even tell you what the theme of this month's box is, and it is Yorkshire. So all these beers are from breweries in Yorkshire. I myself am from Yorkshire, South Yorkshire in particular, if you can't tell um, by the accent. So um, this is an interesting one for me, beers from where I am. And again, with the magazine, I don't really tend to read it. What I tend to do is skip to where is it? Towards the back where they show you the different beers and they have these kind of spider graphs that show you the kind of tasting notes on there. I quite like to look at that. But um, apart from that, I just kind of skim through it and I don't really read it. This can looks really, really cool. This is Turning Point Brew Co. Moon Safari Amarillo and Citra Pale Ale with 
Uh, I don't know if that's the sun or a planet. This kind of looks like a river flowing down. Uh, yeah, I don't know, some kind of glowing orb coming out of a mountain. Maybe it's a volcano. I mean, make your own sort of assumptions out of that. I would say that that looks like a planet on first uh, look, but looking a bit deeper, that kind of looks like the mouth of a volcano. So, um, not very sure, but it's an interesting can, that's for sure. Hazy pale ale loaded with citrusy notes of tangerine and grapefruit, suitable for vegans. Tangerine and grapefruit in beer. Um, I've kind of gone off grapefruit in my beer. I used to like it quite a lot, but now I've gone off it a little bit. And um, the same kind of goes for orange in my beer. I used to like that quite a lot, but I've kind of gone off it a little bit recently, but um, tangerine might be a little bit more sweeter than just plain orange, so. Um, I think I will like this one. Well, that's another pale and we haven't had a dark beer yet. Will we get one? Oh, <laughs> literally the next one that I pulled out was a stout. Now this one again is North Brewing Co. Dream Cycle Oatmeal Stout. I haven't tried an oatmeal stout yet. Um, all of the stouts that I've tried have been milk stouts i think i tried a dry stout in the first box that i got but i haven't tried an oatmeal stout yet so i guess we'll see what this one tastes like i haven't had a dark beer in about two months now seems i didn't get one in last month's box so um yeah i'm looking forward to this and this one is also vegan it says that on the side is it going to focus maybe so um maybe they've just switched over the milk for oat milk or something like that not sure. First thing that caught my eye on this can is the gold on the back. That looks very nice. And on the front there, the beer itself is called Gold Rush with, I'm assuming that's hops there. It says Os Brewery Et or OSS Brewery ETT. Don't know. Um, West Coast Session Pale Ale. That's always good. Like a good pale ale. This beer contains water, malted barley, malted wheat, hops, yeast, blah, blah, blah. 4.1% volume. I haven't gone through the volume with you, have I? It's another thing that I've missed out. So this one, the Gold Rush is 4.1% volume. I just dropped that can on the floor, so I won't be drinking that one first. The Oatmeal Stout is 4.4% volume. Moon Safari is 4.2%. Lutin is 45 And the Earthly Delights is 48 So all below five so far, which is not a problem for me. I quite enjoy low alcohol now that I'm getting old and I can't really handle my alcohol much anymore. So um, low alcohol is fine for me. This one, it's got a nice can again. Um, if I didn't see the name there, grapefruit, virtuous grapefruit, I would have assumed that these were oranges, but I'm going to assume now that these are grapefruits. Virtuous grapefruit session IPA, Kirkstall, the grapefruit edition of our Session IPA, virtuous, extra citrus and extra delicious, vegan friendly and gluten free, 4.5% volumes. Now I said earlier that I'm not really a fan of grapefruit in my beer anymore. I don't dislike it. It's not one of those things that I would taste it and go, oh, that's disgusting. It's just not something that I would pick above other things. I still do like it, but just not as much as I thought I did. This is Yorkshire Gold Pale Ale Paradise, Thomas Fawcett Tynes, Lalam, Lalaman? I'm, I think that that looks like a Welsh word, which they pronounce with, I'm pretty sure double L's like a sound, like you've got something stuck in your throat. Uh, I did live in Wales for a period of my life that I'm not going to go into. Um, but I don't know, I'm just making a guess on that. This can looks very nice, just figuring out how to hold it. It looks like it's looking out over a Yorkshire farmer's field. Maybe starting to get sunset, a little bit hazy there. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. It says an elegant pale ale with a simple grain bill that lets the golden promise shine and a classic subtle hot profile to lend interest and balance pours an opulent golden yellow. And this one is 4%. I feel like a lot of these beers are gonna be quite simple, quite traditional because that just tends to be how we do things here in Yorkshire. We don't, things don't get crazy. Like um, 
there was a lot of Manchester breweries last time that had flavors and styles and they were all really nice and stuff. People over here are very old fashioned and set in their ways and tend to be old men and farmers that like a pint of bitter or pale ale or something like that with nothing frilly and fancy about it. So I'm assuming that these are all gonna be quite traditional, just quite monotone or not very deep. I don't want to say boring because I, I don't, I quite like just plain normal a beer to be a beer. Sometimes you don't want a lot of fancy stuff in there, but that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from this box and especially this can with the uh, hillside and stuff, very traditional and kind of plain. Magic Rock Brewing, Bre Brewing? <laughs> I haven't had a drink today, but I do sound like I'm drunk, I'm not. Mild Out Yorkshire Mild Magic Rock Brewing, 4% volume, drink magic. Um, Yorkshire Mild, I don't know if this is a dark beer or a light beer, honestly, the can doesn't give it away. I, last week, I think, had a Magic Rock Brewing, brew, I'm just, I give up, a Magic Rock beer um, that I bought from Marks and Spencer's. Uh, I don't drop in Marks and Spencers before people start thinking I'm posh. I was in there to get one of those chocolate carrot things for Easter <laughs> and I saw it, but uh, Mild Out, Yorkshire Mild, Magic Rock Brewing, 4%. It doesn't say whether it's light or dark. I don't know, kind of know what mild means in terms of light or dark, so this one is a mystery. Father Magic Stout. Takes me back to the fava beans that I do not like. A, moder a modern spin on timeless classic, dark grains and dark Munich malt give this beer layers of cereal complexity as well as its black colour, tinged with red in the light. Fava bean is added for yet another layer of intrigue, lending Moorish umami notes, silky smooth and highly drinkable. Collaboration beer between Free Assembly and the Honest Bean Co. I didn't like them fava beans. So I don't think I'm gonna like this, but I'm not gonna prejudge it. The can looks dope. I like these squiggles and doodles and dark colors. Well, I mean, some of them are light, some of them are dark. I don't wanna prejudge, but I also kinda am prejudging. Another Magic Rock Brewing beer, um, collaboration with Masons of Yorkshire, Botanicalist Gin and Tonic IPA. Now this, this could be interesting. Um, like with the, what was it? Like with the Tiny Rebel um, 11th birthday anniversary pack that I reviewed, if you haven't seen that, go check it out now. They also tried to combine some kind of spirit into um, a pale ale or some kind of um, light or dark beer option and to my palate it just didn't work so this is either going to be very good or very very bad and I'm I'm thinking that it's gonna tip over to the good scale because the flavors in a gin and tonic the kind of citrusy the herbal everything that goes along with it also works very well in beer so this may be one of the ones that works well, but it could also be done very wrong if the taste of the gin is too overpowering. Because spirits and beer don't mix, in, to me anyway. Says Botanicalist Gin and Tonic IPA combining modern Yorkshire brewing techniques with no compromise distilling. Botanicalist fuses a secret mix of eight botanicals with a clean and crisp IPA recipe to deliver a fresh, refreshingly complex beer filled with citrus notes, pine, zest, and a trace of sweet bitterness. Proper Yorkshire goodness. See, that's what I mean with the notes. Pine, zest, and sweet bitterness do work well in beer, and they also taste really well in a gin and tonic, so. It just, I'm pretty sure that wasn't how that sentence was supposed to come out, but you understand what I mean. I'm not a wordsmith, but the point still stands. Spirits don't mix well with beer, but the flavors do. And also the can. See, I'm a real fan of this sort of crazy uh, pattern that's going off. A lot of colours, 
a lot of different directions. I like it. This one may be the one that we try for the video. Next one we have is Echo Chamber DDH Pale Ale from Rooster Brewing Co. since 1993, 4.5%. Oh, I forgot to tell you the volume of the gin and tonic. Gin and tonic is 5%, so that's our first 5%. The Echo Chamber DDH Pale Ale is hazy, hop forward, extra pale ale. Hops are Amarillo, Azica, Cashmere, Eldorado, and Idaho 7. Dry hops, Amarillo, and Cashmere. Lightly filtered drink, drink quality, not quantity. Assured Independence, British Craft Brewer. Again, the colours on the can are very light, very eye-catching. Uh, I don't really know what to think of this one. Um, I I can't remember if in the first box, the Falcon one was a DDH. That one was IPA. I don't know what DDH stands for also. If somebody knows that, comment and tell me. I could Google it, but I, I probably won't. I think it's DDP. IPAs that I like. I, I don't know, but we'll see. This this could go either way. Could be good, could be bad. I, I'm going to lean on good. I, I tend to like most pails, so I, I can see me liking this. And last but not least, Black Sheep Rig Welter. Strong Dark Yorkshire Ale, born and bred in Masham, Yorkshire. 5.9%, so this one is pretty much 6% from Black Sheep. Tried a couple of Black Sheep beers. I can't say that I enjoyed them too much, but I'm not gonna try and prejudge. Usually the sheep, uh, or maybe it's not, maybe just in the ones that I've seen, but the sheep's on his back there, so I think he might be drunk or dead from drinking too much Rigor Welter. Strong Dark Yorkshire Ale. So this is dark beer and it's 5.9%. It says, founded by Paul Theakston, the original black sheep, the fabled Rig Welter is a ferocious and powerful dark ale with true Yorkshire bite, a wolf in sheep's clothing. This limited edition cask strength iteration of the fabled Rig Welter packs a higher alcohol t content for extra brawn. Complex flavors of chocolate, licorice, and coffee blend with a roasted malt, leaving a long lasting dry finish. I don't think I'm going to like this, even though everything that they've just mentioned there, I do like. I like chocolate, I like black licorice, and I like coffee, but all together in a strong, dry, dark beer, I don't think that's going to be for me, but that's the final one that we've got. I'm going to put these in the fridge and we'll come back and in a few hours or a few days and we will try one of them out and I'll give you my opinion. Hello, it's now Tuesday and we are gonna try the Botanicalist Gin and Tonic IPA from Magic Rock Brewing and Mason's. First of all, the can looks really cool. I like the colors on this and I like that some parts of it are shiny metallic. You can't really see because it's quite frosty, but. Some parts are shiny metallic and other parts are matte. The orange, red, blue, just looks really, really cool in my opinion. Uh, on the back it says, Botanicalist Gin and Tonic IPA, combining modern Yorkshire brewing techniques with no compromise distilling. Botanicalist fuses a secret mix of eight botanicals with a clean and crisp IPA recipe to deliver a refreshingly complex beer filled with citrus notes, pine, zest, and a trace of sweet bitterness. Find more magic, magicrockbrewing.com, brewed and canned in the UK, suitable for vegans, 5% volume, 330 milliliters. So let's just open it up. a few days ago this will either be really really good or really really bad mixing spirits and beer in my opinion just doesn't tend to work i've tried a lot i remember a few years ago i'm showing my age now they made um foster's rocks which was like foster's that was supposed to taste like spiced rum and it was disgusting 
the Tiny Rebel birthday pack that I reviewed a few weeks back um, didn't really work for me with the spirit tasting beers. It was like a rum and pineapple one and also the limoncello one it was pretty awful. So um, this has every potential to be good, but it also has a lot of potential to be very bad. The notes that I pointed out on the can, um, what's it say? Citrus, pine, zest and sweet bitterness all go well in beer but it's just the gin thing that's throwing me a little bit. It smells nice, it just smells like IPA, it doesn't smell like gin at all. It smells quite piney, I'm getting the pine. But yeah, first try. actually not gonna lie that burp tasted pretty good so i'm gonna go in for another i was gonna say another hit then we're not smoking in this video <laughs> that's quite pleasant actually i'm getting the citrus notes there's a little bit of pine on the aftertaste it's not really coming through at the top, on the tip of my tongue. There's a little bit of sweetness from the citrus, but mostly, the savour is not the word that I'm looking for. What is the word that I'm looking for? I guess crisp is the word that I'm looking for more than anything. The zest cuts through and gives it a little bit of sweetness on the tip of your tongue, but overall, it's piney, it's a little bit floral. And I, I'm getting more of a tonic flavor than I am a gin flavor. It doesn't taste like tonic, don't get me wrong, but I'm not getting any spirit hit. I'm just getting more of a crisp slash bitterness. It's not too heavy on the pine. It's not too heavy on the botanical side. I guess that's the word that I should use. It's not too gin heavy. It doesn't taste like gin at all. It doesn't think of the taste of gin, just regular, say Gordon's gin, but not mixed. There's no gin flavor. It's more of a, whenever I drink tonic water, I, I'm quite partial to tonic water. I like it just on its own without gin. Whenever I drink tonic water, I think of citrus. So I think the citrusy vibe is making me think of tonic water. And obviously I've got gin in my head, which is making me think that this tastes more like the bitterness of tonic than it does of spirit. I'm thinking way too hard about this, bro, but I was expecting this to either be really good or really bad, and I'm genuinely very pleasantly surprised. It definitely tastes like a beer, which I'm happy about. It doesn't taste like a spirit, but it's got the herbal slash botanical side meeting the citrusy zest absolutely perfectly, and for me, when I rate this beer on the website, I'm gonna give it a straight five because I would definitely drink a few of these. So yeah, that was March's Yorkshire beer box, um, a beer box close to my heart, being a Yorkshireman. And I liked, I haven't drank all of them yet. I was gonna say I liked all of them. I've tried um, most of the dark beers bar one. I'm thinking next month that I'm gonna to change to just light beers because we are now getting in spring slash summer and the heavy beers are just that heavy and filling and warming. I want something light and refreshing, something that's gonna pick me up and make me feel summery. So I'm gonna to switch to the summer box and next month I believe it's the Siren Siren 10th anniversary birthday beer box. So if you like the video, leave a like, leave me a comment on me if you've tried any of these beers, subscribe for more videos and peace. And in here, forgot to say that if you hit the link in the pinned comment, you can get 50% off your first box. This is not sponsored, but it is a referral link, so I get some free beer, you get half off, hit the link.
Thank you.